सर्वे नमो नम शुभ संध्या ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ संस्कृत क्लब आई एक्सटेंड वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो लेट मी टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इनवाइट टूडेज गेस्ट स्पीकर प्रोफेसर हरीश चंद्र वर्मा डीन श्री प्रोफेसर पारिता Associate Dean, Academic Studies, Professor Ekesh Sharma, for lighting the lamp. Vice versa. 
The club culminated out of a 10 day spoken Sanskrit workshop conducted in March 2015 that saw huge participation from faculties and students alike. Events that followed received intense enthusiasm from the campus. Professor K. Ramasubramanian, head of the cell for Indian Science and Technology in Sanskrit, IIT Bombay, was the speaker of the first guest lecture that we organized. The summer that followed was made resourceful for multiple students of the club who were sent to work on summer projects at IIT Bombay and IIT Kharagpur. In September 2015, we organized a workshop on Vedic mathematics, exhibiting and teaching super fast computing skills. Vedic chants were recited verbally and translations screened during the convocation ceremony of 2015, breaking the past trend. On the 15th day of October 2015, Professor Michel Danino, renowned researcher on Indian heritage, addressed a huge audience during the second guest lecture that was organized by the club. We are also working on parallelly improving our own grammar skills by organizing weekly classes as part of the Pravesha course that's certified by the Sanskrit Bharti. Plus, group discussions are also organized on a frequent basis. The Sanskrit club is equipped with multiple cells for research and development, music and design. For every mind that's willing to teach and learn, we are always available. Gachan pipi lago yati yojana nam shatanya pe, agachan vanate opi, Living entities as small as ants can cross miles walking tiny steps. And a creature as mighty and swift as a griffin will make no progress if it doesn't try. So let's just try. I would now like to invite Dr. Anil Kumar Gaurishati to uh, initiate. Thank you very much. First of all, I apologize for the delay happened. And, uh, Second apologies because of the size of the screen, many of you might be feeling inconvenient. So here is a person who doesn't need any introduction, but I don't have any option. Professor Harish Chandra Varma, after doing MSc and PhD from IIT Kanpur, he joined Patna University as a lecturer. He was there for about 10 to 15 years. Then he joined IIT Kanpur in the year 1994. And since then, he's working there. Now he's a senior professor, and his research area is experimental nuclear physics. Other than being an excellent teacher and researcher, he is very much actively involved in social activities. And one of the successful projects that he initiated is Shiksha Sopan. Many of you who are having relation with IIT Kanpur or with his website might be aware of. And with this Shiksha Sopan, he is trying to inculcate scientific temper in the minds of students, especially in the government school level. And he also conducted hundreds of training camps for the school and the college teachers. So please welcome Hans Varma to deliver a talk on subject practices in the club. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, and thank you Sanskrit Club for inviting me here. I am very happy to see that the Sanskrit club which was initiated last year has already done so many programs and is very active and uh, you have excellent working team. So it's very nice. We don't have it at IIT Kanpur. Although some Sanskrit activities do take place there also, but uh, we don't have an official club like that. Okay, so my association with Sanskrit is, uh, is very small. Uh, we too invited a Sanskrit Bharti activist, Sandhya Mishra, to IIT Kanpur to teach spoken Sanskrit way back in uh, 2010 or 11 during a summer. And it was organized by that uh, group, Shiksha Zopan. And the participants were mostly children from the nearby villages of age group, say 16 to 20 years, like that. And I was one of the participants of uh, over age in that uh, uh, group. And I remember how she used to teach. The first lecture 
uh, was on A sharp chord. So she will take something in the, in the hand and then ask, A sharp chord, A sharp chord. So she took a piece of chalk and then asked the question, A sharp chord, A sharp chord, and then replied, A sharp Sudhakhanda. Chalk is called Sudhakhanda in the Sanskrit. So Eshaka is what is this? And then the answer comes that Esha Sudhakhanda and so on. So it was a very nice uh, program. For about 15 days uh, those lectures went on. And I was an irregular student there. I was not very regular, so intermittently used to be absent as happens in uh, all IIT classes. <laughs> you, you don't attend all the 42 lectures in a semester. It's very difficult. <laughs> so like that, the same training. But then at the end of the course, she asked everyone to say something in Sanskrit. And since it was well announced, so I had prepared my story. And the story was based on my own personal experience when I visited uh, Goa and there was, uh, we have to go out uh, for sightseeing and so on. We hired an auto rickshaw and then it was heavily raining and then uh, we went out and after some time that rickshaw got, uh, some snack was developed in the rickshaw. So every now and then it will stop and then the driver will do something in the, in the machine and then again it will start for some time and so on and so forth. So finally, in a well-populated place where the vehicles, other vehicles were available, Rikshawala told us that, okay sir, from here you can take another auto rickshaw. I can help you in getting that auto rickshaw because this, is, this will create problems. So I will take care of my rickshaw. Thank you very much and sorry I could not. And so on. And the interesting part was, this was around uh, 2 o'clock in the in, in afternoon, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. So we took another rickshaw and we went at several places and around 8 o'clock we tried to return to our hotel and uh, near some 3 kilometer from my hotel, for, from our hotel, there was a place where we stopped for having some uh, food. And after that, when we came out of that, we were just standing on the, on the road and uh, stopping any rickshaw that comes on the way to cover that three kilometers. And we found that same old rickshaw wala, auto rickshaw wala, who was there, who was coming from some, some place. And when we gave the symbol, he stopped, Aray sir, aap hi hai. And we said, Aray tum phir aage. <laughs> Like that. So this is a story I prepared in uh, Sanskrit. I practiced it. Of course, uh, I, I went uh, empty-handed. Nothing. The notes were not allowed. It was not an open note examination. <laughs> so I had remembered that story well. And it was a long story. This was the longest of all presentations. It took me some 15 minutes or so. So I spoke very fluently that time, uh, that story in Sanskrit. But now it's uh, all over. <laughs> Okay, so the topic is very peculiar uh, for a physics professor, right? surgery practices in India. I never had any biology course in my, in my life, although now we have a lot of friends, I have a lot of friends in biology department because in IIT campus we now have a bioscience and bioengineering department. So perhaps my interest started uh, from interaction with those professors of bioscience and bioengineering. But then, uh, Okay, I think one is enough, right? Okay. So, but then uh, it was really stimulated by uh, an event in Bihar and that was in Munger. I went to Munger in connection with uh, some uh, uh, physics teachers workshop meeting and there the students asked me this question that uh, why is it that all scientific discoveries are made by Englishmen. A student asking this question, and several school students have also asked this question in past also, and it uh, gives me some kind of uh, uncomfort. If our young students have this feeling that making discoveries 
is not our cup of tea. It is the, the job of Westerners and our job is only to understand the discoveries made by others and, and uh, make utilization of that. That is not good for the health of the country. So these kind of questions, especially this Munger questions, uh, excited me to look into the past and see what kind of contribution we have made in uh, science and technology and so on. So I studied many things. Uh, in, so I came across the surgery thing also. Uh, I, I have done some uh, reading in mathematics or astronomy or architecture or metallurgy, engineering, many things I have done. So this was one of the topics where we found that yes, we, we do have our, uh, not only we have our uh, presence in past in these fields, but also this has led to a very important branch of surgery, modern surgery, that is plastic surgery. All this modern plastic surgery have emanated from the work done by Sushrut and so on. So this was one topic which uh, I thought I should share with others also. So I have other topics also and I have prepared talks, but today's talk is on this. I will not talk about the surgery which is mentioned in mythology that the Lord Shiva chopped off a uh, head of his own son and, and then uh, he brought some elephant son uh, this head and put it there. So those kind of surgeries uh, I, I am not interested in. Then this was a program Devo Ke Dev Mahadev which was broadcasted and live okay. This also I am not going to talk about. These kind of things I will not talk about. Now, okay, in continuation which, you are, which was, I was telling, that we are made to believe that we are not made for science. This is a warning signal. Uh, this, this is not good. I don't want to live in past, but at the same time I don't want to get frustrated. You know, in uh, all kinds of 2020, 50 overs maps, the players of both the teams are, are good, but then uh, that mental makeup on that particular moment decides which of the team is going to dominate over the other. So that mental makeup is very important. So that is uh, what is, is wrong with this, that we are not made with science. And most of it is because of our education system, that we know since uh, we are already behind the schedule, I won't talk about it either. So this Lord Macaulay who had uh, uh, formulated the system which we are still carrying out uh, no, with uh, slight cosmetic changes here and there was designed by this person who says that I have never found uh, one among them who could deny uh, that a single self of a good European library was worth the whole native literature of India and Arabia. So that's the kind of my frame. Uh, of the person who is deciding the entire education system in India. And when this system is, uh, is, uh, is installed, then funding to all Sanskrit and Arabic institutions immediately stopped and English education started. And the biggest uh, problem or, or the impact, bad impact was that before this, huge number of schools, madrasas, institutions, whatever you call, inst some education centers, where there are in huge numbers. Anyone who is competent, any guru who is competent can start a school and have some dis disciples and train them in some skills. But with this system, if you want to run a school, you have to have a particular building with this much of area, these many rooms should be there, this much of playground should be there, this much of office space should be there, and so on. And that restricted the number of educational institutions, and from there comes illiteracy and all those things. So that was the biggest uh, fallout of this system, and we are still living with that same thing. Even today, if I want to open a school, I have to have a, a building, a land, if it is a plus two, 
uh, high school, we should have 1.5 acres of land and uh, these many, some 15 rooms built of proper size, 20 feet by 20, uh, 25 feet and all those things. Really. And so many of the people who could do a, a good work in education, they are not able to do that. So that kind of system is still to help. All right, so let's go back to our uh, surgery things. A uh, lot of Sanskrit literature available on this, Charak Samhita, Shushruk Samhita, Astang and a huge number of uh, Sanskrit texts are there. I wonder whether my colleague did not know about these texts or since he did not know Sanskrit, therefore he could not find any content in that. So what happened so that uh, he could uh, not do the real justice. Now, my first slide is on this uh, paper which is published in Nature uh, and people uh, who know about journals and research and all those, Nature is today world's most prestigious science journal. If someone has a publication in Nature as a first author and applies for a faculty position of IIT Roorkee, I don't think any dean or director or any selection committee will have any difficulty in taking the person in. Nature is the most prestigious journal of science education. And uh, in this, uh, the researchers have described the, the study of 11 teeth which are excavated from this Meharkar presently in Pakistan. And then they have studied all these things, all these uh, teeth which are there and several drills are there. And the very methodical studies with scanning electron microscopy and all those things are done. And uh, some of their conclusions are the following. It is dated 9,000 years back. So at least this dental surgery which was there in India, at least the history is the tradition is nine millenniums years back. So this is one. Then the other thing is curing tooth head with drills made with flint heads. Together with these teeth they have found several flint heads from which the this drilling was done. So abundant um, number of, of flint heads are found in those areas. And uh, for the, to the tool was surprisingly effective. That, these are the sentences from that nature's paper. I have, I have just taken some sentences. So the tool was surprisingly effective at re removing rotting dental tissues. And drilling was performed on a living person who continued to chew on the tooth surface after they had been drilled. This comes from the, because when you drill you have sharp edges. So if it is for decoration or some other purpose on some dead teeth, those sharp edges will be there. But if uh, the person is living, even after the surgery, then uh, all that exercises will go on and it will become, a, become smooth in a particular fashion. So they have found that yes, it is there and therefore it was done on a living person and the living person did live much uh, time after the surgery. And some of the things are really very good. The practice continued for about 1,500 years. This is their own dating schemes, so the kind of teeth that they have obtained, kind of flint teeth that have, they have obtained, they have dated them and it gives that, uh, okay, this, is, uh, this process continues for uh, about 1,500 years. And uh, okay, flint grill heads are found. And uh, yeah, this is, this is an interesting one. The procedure involved not just removal of the tooth structure by the drill, but also subsequent micro tool carving of the cavity wall, either by operator or by the patient. So the drill was made, that is one, but inside that cavity, further work is being done, the micro tooling is also done in, in, in those things. This, this, this is not really surprising. Am I, am I obstructing your view? Am I obstructing the view? No, it's okay? Fine. Alright, so these, these, these people, is the French group and uh, the professor, uh, this uh, Meshia Ali, 
he has constructed the similar things in his own laboratory. So taking the same kind of flint head, same dimensions and so on, and then teeth, and uh, the study reveals that possibly it was done with this uh, uh, bow type of a structure for drilling. So he reconstructed this whole thing in his lab. And then the kind of cavity that he could make in the, in the teeth, compared that with the kind of cavity which was there in the excavated teeth. So that is how he had uh, compared all those things. And he says that yes, with these kind of flint heads, these kind of cavities can be made. And he has really made them and, and showed. Then he, so he has reconstructed these all things. And somebody writes that if it is done in one go, it will be very painful as, as a lot of heat would have been produced. So various studies of these things. There are more studies on dental surgery, but I will just uh, talk about this. Now this is uh, called trepanations. And when I asked uh, my doctor friend in Haridwar only Shanti Kunj University when I was there, Dev Sanskriti University, then I met some doctor friends there. So I asked, what is this word? Uh, because the diagram, the figure which is given or the picture which is given is just holes in the skull. So if there are so many holes, how can the person live? And uh, then the doctor says that yes, uh, this, this word is actually meant for that. They make some kind of hole, but not through through. It's only the upper part of the skull which is uh, removed. And this is removed to because this because of excessive stress. Sometimes the the nerves there or the, the whatever tissues or whatever they get a lot of strain. And so if you open it up, they get a uh, place to relax and that gives relief to the... So this is this is a practice in, in medical surgery. So people had found uh, this kind of uh, you know, skulls and this is from Kashmir Valley and 2300 before Christ, that means 4000, more than 4500 years like that. And uh, then the, this particular skull was for, for female around this. All this is I am telling from some journals. So some journals. This journal is International Journal of uh, Osteoarchaeology, published in 2001. And that uh, Nature paper was in 2008, I believe, something like that. Okay. So this is a female skull on which this uh, trepanations have been done. Okay, so surgery in different settings uh, perhaps did not survive for long after the last stage, that's what they conclude. Then in Harappan times, uh, we have similar uh, trepanation things and uh, this was published in current science, I believe. This was 4,300 years be before present. So this was the first uh, evidence of brain surgery in Bronze Age of Harappa. Okay, so they, they, they give all these scientific observations using the modern tools of material science and physics, uh, these characterization tools, and established that such surgery has been done. Yeah, this is current science, 2011. Now, she is assistant professor of anthropology. I uh, could have been promoted by now because I had prepared this for the first time uh, about two years ago. So she has a project and the project Bioarchaeology of Harappa Anthropological Research and Training. Perhaps she has chosen this title so that the acronym becomes Bharat. So I don't know. Or it is accidental. So she has studied uh, uh, this another practice in medical and that is craniotomy, in which a small flap is opened from the temporarily from the skull and then they get some access and do some surgery. So she has uh, she has a different angle of study in that. She wanted to establish how what was the social order in these times. So that was the idea. But it did come out that yes, such such surgeries were prevalent. And uh, most of it, she says that because was because of uh, uh, 
duels where people quarrel each, each other and then they hit each other and some internal injury is done. To cure that internal injury, this kind of surgery is done. And the conclusion that she draws is, if it, uh, she has found some uh, whatever number of uh, such uh, skulls and then he identifies female and male and so on and then uh, she concludes that there was a uh, 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 sex uh, uh, this dual character so if it is male then the doctor will do the surgery if it is female she will be left unattended to die and so so those are the kind of things but nevertheless our interest is that such surgery was available in India. Okay. Now, this is of course uh, no talk on surgery can uh, be without Sushrut, who is one of the, not one of the, the greatest surgeon uh, the, the uh, immortal time has produced. So, it's a very, very voluminous work. And uh, this is the English translation which is now available, available in PDF format and one can download this. This translation is by this, uh, it was edited by this Kaviraj Kunjalal and, and so on. This is also, this was done in uh, 11, 1911, but now it is digitized and from here you can download this. So it's a huge, uh, huge treatise, huge treatise. I wonder if it is uh, one lifetime work or it was a uh, school which was working on this tirelessly and then Sushrut had all that uh, data with him and compiled together with his own work. But it's a huge work which is which is done here. Okay, so a lot of uh, surgery tools are shown and surgical techniques are described in great detail uh, and this particular uh, sentence that I have taken, major abdominal operations were also carried out, vesicle calcul, popularly known as stone, even those days were common and hence the operation for the removal of vesicle calcul was well described uh, by Sushrutha. He is uh, in uh, Apollo Hospital, Delhi, who has written this article. So all the varieties of things, but the surgical, the this, uh, this suturing, once you open something, you have to really join them finally, that wound has to be joined and so on. So those things are, are described and so on. Eye diseases are, are, are described. Now this is a, also very interesting, it's a karnabandha. In, in older times, people used to wear very heavy ear rings. Okay? And because of the gravity, uh, many times that uh, circular hole will, be, will become elliptical first and then the major axis of that ellipse will keep increasing <laughs> and finally this loop will be divided in two separate parts. So that's very common in fact even today. In my family also there is a lady who has this kind of thing. So piercing ear lobe, uh, 15 methods are described for piercing ear lobes. And then if it separates out, how to join them. So that is described in very great detail. And that has carried through. That is, uh, that is transmitted from generation to generation and all those things. Then he has described so many instruments, but uh, I was more, more fascinated by some of those instruments, which are, uh, you can call it, you can, put them under the name endoscopy. So endoscopy is extremely important for modern surgery also, where they put some uh, instrument to areas which you cannot uh, access uh, manually. So some instrument is, uh, is sent there and then the surgery is done there. So first endoscopy, I believe, is uh, described by the Shushrut. Of course, today we have all optical fibers and from one fiber uh, the light will go, another fiber uh, that uh, uh, our instrument will go for surgery and then it is projected on a camera, on, on, on a computer screen and all those things. But basically the idea is that in inaccessible parts of the body, 
you can go with your instruments. So that is important. So these kind of things are described here. And one thing I'll just read. So Sushrut describes uh, the method of extraction of a foreign body, for example, a substance made of lac from the throat. If something is stuck here, it's neither going in nor coming out, and it's stuck here, it's very painful. So if it is uh, made of something which can melt easily, one can use uh, this kind of endoscope in which uh, the, this tube of copper is, is inserted and heated iron probe or sound should be introduced through a tube of copper and made to touch the foreign body. So the moment it touches that uh, thing, it melts and sticks to that and immediately they flow cold water in that tube. So that solidifies and doesn't uh, go here and there. And then the tube is taken out nicely and that foreign element is extracted. So those kind of, there are many other uses uh, if I will describe them. Okay, so this was translated, this Shushrut Sanita is translated uh, in 8th century by this uh, Arab people, Kitab Shushrut, and from there into Latin, and from there it goes into Europe. So that's the kind of flow of our medical surgical knowledge to best. Now, Jivak is essentially a physician, but he has done some surgery as the stories come out, and this is very, very interesting. In fact, Jivak's story is very interesting. Who was Jivak? Jivak was a, a great medical practitioner, but he was son of a dancer Salavati in the court of King Bimbisa. So King Bimbisa uh, wanted uh, a beautiful, attractive dancer and uh, like Amrapali of Vaishali and, and so on. So this Salavati was finally selected and she used to dance in the court. And during those periods, uh, she became pregnant and this baby was born and uh, she also did not know who is the father of this baby. And then uh, if, uh, if, it, if, it, uh, if the baby is there, then naturally all the dancing practices and uh, all those things will be hampered. And she was so much uh, loved by all the king and the courtiers alike, so did not want to leave that luxury. And therefore, she abandoned the son after birth. Uh, so she said the maids to take this boy, the baby boy, and put it on some garbage behind the walls. So it was done like that. And when this prince, Abhay Kumar, Abhay Rajkumar, was going through that path, he saw a lot of crows uh, there. And then he asked the, the, these people, servants, uh, companions, to see what is there, why so many crows are there. And then they reported that uh, a fresh baby boy is lying on the heap of that uh, waste. So he saved the child and took it to palace and asked the maids to bring him up. And finally sent to, for education, sent to Takshila University, the first university in the world, Takshila University, which is present in Pakistan. So there uh, he took uh, this medical training that Takshila University. So, so, okay. so there he took uh, training for, from his uh, whoever the teacher there. And after seven years of study, he asked the guru, when will my study be completed? So after seven years when he, he asked this, the Guru says that, oh, it's all fine, you have to give a test. If you pass the test, uh, your study is complete. <coughs> so the student has to ask for the examination, otherwise it will continue to go on. Fortunately, it's not there in our system. The examinations are held at proper time by the administration. And if at all, the student has to ask, ask for deferring the examination dates because the preparation is not complete. <laughs> so the guru gives the tests that to go in this entire district 
and find all the materials, all the plants, which are of no medicinal use. So if you can find all such plants, don't leave even one. If you can find all such plants in the right number, in correct number, you will be passed. And then Jeevat goes uh, through forests and everywhere in this area, the whole district he moves and does not find even one which does not have any medicinal value. And very disappointed, very frustrated that uh, again I will have to study uh, for how many years God knows because I could not find even one. He went to the Guru and said that uh, I have searched all over the whole jungle, the whole district and unfortunately I could not find even one plant which does not have any medicinal value. And the Guru says, you have passed the test with distinction, your job, your study is over, give the certificate. And not only give the certificate, also give some money. Uh, so that he can uh, go and reach uh, that uh, palace from where he has come and then very happily he goes with that money and it's uh, uh, several hundred kilometers from uh, that Patliputra and uh, he, so halfway he exhausted all his money somewhere in Ayodhya or so he exhausted all his money perhaps what not a good manager of money. So he should have known that I have to reach such and such place, so that, uh, that expenditure should be controlled. So when he exhausted with the money, he then he says that, okay, in that particular village or that uh, locality, he publicized himself that uh, I am an Ayurvedic practitioner, a Vaidya, and if anyone has any problem, health problem, I am here to cure it. And uh, then uh, he meets uh, a lady, a lady who was ailing, a rich lady who was ailing with uh, some headache or something uh, for quite some time, several, several, several years. And very old uh, Vadyas had treated it of no avail. And when he came to know about that lady, he went there and uh, gave the masses that uh, I can do that and the mate who gave the message uh, that that rich lady asked uh, how does he look like and the mate said that he's very young and very attractive and the physic is very good and so on and so forth and then the rich lady says oh that means he's a novice so it won't do but then uh, jeeva insists that uh, i won't take a penny uh, just give me a chance. If I am not able to cure you, I won't take a penny and I am 100% confident. So finally, the story goes that uh, he cured the lady and uh, the lady gave 4,000 gold coins and the husband gave another 8,000 gold coins and so on and so forth. So he had a lot of money with that. So uh, a big package he earned from that. But then uh, the surgery part comes when he does uh, a brain surgery of a rich merchant. And the merchant was also very uh, in deep uh, problem because some worms were developed inside the brain. And uh, when this uh, Jeevak examined, he found that the surgery is the only way the surgery has to be done. So that's okay. But then post-surgery, treatment or precautions were also very difficult. So he told the merchant that you can be cured and I can do that. I will have to do a small surgery that is not very painful. But after that, after that, you have to strictly be on your back. When you, when you sleep for seven months, for seven months you have to sleep on your back, on, on the back, without uh, taking any turns left or right. And after that you have to sleep another seven months 
on left side and after that you have to sleep another seven months on the right side and then you will be perfectly cured. And if you do something wrong in between, then my surgery can be a failure. Now this uh, merchant was so deeply pained by all those uh, worms and, or whatever ailment was there, he agreed to this condition and the surgery was made. But then uh, hardly seven days, he started complaining from the fourth day, fifth day, that no, I, I cannot stay uh, in this position, I have to change my position, uh, it's intolerable and all those things. So seventh day, climax, the patient refuses to do, do that, even if I die, I, I cannot remain like that. And Jeevak says that, okay, I relax the condition, you can take left turn, but after taking left turn, seven months, nothing less than that. Ah, so he's relieved, takes the left turn, that, okay, fine. But seven months, once again, four, five days, and uh, he's restless and all those things, complains. And then again, the same story. The, again, Jeeva concedes that, okay, after seven days, take right turn, but now you have to stay for seven months and all. So the same story repeats there. After seven days, he says that I cannot be in this position anymore. And Jeeva says that you are already cured. You can do whatever you want. Another message was very different. The message is very different, and that is, Jeevak knew the character of the patient. If you are, if you are to be a good doctor, it's not the disease and the medicine. You have to also know the entire behavioral aspects of your patients, how the patient will react to what. And he already knew that if I say seven days, third day he will revolt. So if I have to keep him on for seven days, I have to till seven months. So it was a pre-planned strategy, right? So uh, so finally he he got uh, one thousand one thousand gold points uh, because of that surgery and so on. Vat Bhat is another. So Charak Shushruta and Vat Bhat that makes it, they call it Vrihatri. So this, this book I have this book I have purchased this book and I have read this this book. So it has some, basically it's a combination of medicine and surgery. Okay, so alright, let me go ahead. So I want to tell you another good story. So let's skip one. Yeah, decline of golden era of surgery. Why, if we were so ahead in surgery, why finally it declined? Because of some social orders and disorders uh, during this time, uh, Mahavada Jataka, the Buddhist philosophies, uh, Buddha, the Jivak was uh, a physician to Buddha also for some time, Lord Buddha. But then later on, this philosophy had uh, no cutting, shutting, no pain, and uh, ahimsa, and all those things, and this and that. So it was prohibited. Then uh, Manu Smriti also did not allow this. Uh, they also said that if someone does surgery, if it is necessary, do it, but then some purification is necessary, some yajna has to be done to purify them or all those things. So socially, it did not remain a respectable profession. Socially, it was something like uh, something untouchable and so, so that is how this uh, declined. So contact with blood and pus supposed to be polluting and so on. And then uh, is a credit to that the Kumhars, the porters, especially of Maharashtra and Pune, who at least, at least preserved one aspect and uh, that is, that is that rhinoplasty. Rhinoplasty is uh, surgery of nose. So that rhinoplasty, which was described in Sushrut Sangeeta, in that same fashion, in that same manner, this tradition they continued, these kumhars continued, and they were the surgeon vedyas for anyone who loses his or her nose. And losing nose was not that uncommon those days. You remember Ramayana Kathas? 
when Surpankha goes to Ram and Lakshman and uh, Lakshman gets angry with Surpankha, what does he do? Chops off the nose and the ears. So this was a very common type of, uh, of a punishment in Rathanamana. You know Tycho Brahe? Have you heard of Tycho Brahe? He was an astronomer and he used a lot of astronomy data and from Tycho Brahe's data only that uh, uh, this uh, uh, Kepler, Kepler came out with uh, the planetary laws. Kepler did not uh, collect the data. Kepler did a marvelous job of identifying that things are going in, planets are going in ellipse and all those things. But the data was collected by Tycho Brahe. And this Tycho Brahe, once uh, he was uh, in quarrel with someone over some astronomical, mathematical aspects, and the two were not agreeing by arguments, although it was a mathematical problem. So in mathematical problem, uh, I should be able to convince you or you should be able to convince me. There is not much of debate in mathematical problems. But somehow they could not uh, come to a common conclusion and they started quarreling and with the swords and everything. And in that Tycho Brahe's nose was cut. <laughs> and then he put some silver, gold, this, that, an artificial nose and it was just a, just a nose. And he said that Tycho Brahe was very fond of his artificial nose. So this particular thing, rhinoplasty was, uh, was kept alive and uh, it was passed on, you know, after about 2000 years. So such a long time and these Kumhas, these potters, so called uh, lower caste people, they could keep this art alive and this is, the, this is the particular event which has led to modern plastic surgery in the world, that is why it is important. Okay, so this is the beginning of modern public plastic surgery when this knowledge was passed to Europe after 2000 years or so. And how it happened? It happened because Tipu Sultan had a battle with uh, British people. And in that, two bullock cart drivers of British army were made captive by Tipu Sultan. And as usual, their nose were cut. And these people were sent back to the Britishers, British army. Okay? And they remained uh, for a long time, they remained in that uh, state. So, no nose, without nose. And then British officer one day uh, meets some person and he sees uh, some different, slight different kind of nose. And there is some scar here in the forehead. And he asked that gentleman that uh, your nose looks slightly different from uh, normal nose. And then the gentleman says that, uh, sir, my nose was completely chopped off because of something happened in past and I went to this uh, quarter Vedya of Pune and they put this uh, new nose. So the British officer was uh, surprised to listen that and then he found that who is that Vedya? And to see it uh, first hand, he sent this Kawasaji who was one of those bullock drivers uh, to that Vedya and asked the Vedya, can you replace the nose and the Vidya says yes. So the surgery was done. Uh, some skin was taken from the forehead. First uh, measurement was made and after that so a, 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 a wax nose was made to fit that particular size. Then the wax was flattened how much total skin will be required and that much skin was taken from here and then uh, it was uh, flapped leaving out some connection so that the blood blood supply remains there and then from that flap the nose were constructed and uh, after some 3-4 days, 7 days, 5 days of, of, uh, of drying up and all those things the nose was there. So this was the kind of surgery these uh, doctors saw and then they wrote this in a magazine called Gentleman, Gentleman's Magazine in England and this doctor saw that article, so he is a person. He is that person, the bullet, bullet drive. And this is after the after this nose re replacement. 
This picture is after the nose, this actual picture which was taken by those Britishers and then they published in Gentleman's Magazine. I think that uh, original is also here. Yeah, here. So this is this article. Very, with great difficulty I could search this. Okay, it's not readable even from close distance. But uh, yes, with magnifying glass, etc., you can read. So this is how it was published. And this uh, came in notice of that British surgeon and then uh, he studied on this and gathered more information from India and he learned that technique. And then he started giving lectures like I am giving from here in, in England that uh, I can do this nose replacement, I can do this nose replacement. I have learned this technique. Okay, so that uh, was there. So he does all these things. And all right. And uh, yeah, now in this uh, 1814, one English army officer comes with a mutilated uh, nose and for nose restoration. So there were several differences. Uh, normally in Indian surgery, the nose was chopped off. And here the nose uh, is, has disappeared because of some ailment. In fact, reaction of some uh, heavy doses of, uh, of some medicine containing mercury. Because of that, that, uh, that all that stamp and everything got uh, humiliated. So, but uh, the car did not know whether it will work here or not. He was confident if someone's nose is chopped off, he can do it. But in this case, so he said yes, he did not want to lose the patient. Who, which doctor is, which you would like to lose the patient if the patient has already come? So he said yes, he can do it, but he did not know whether it will be successful or not. So he does some, some other minor test surgery somewhere in that area and uh, uh, sees the result for three days. And after that he finds that yes, it is doable and then he does the full surgery. So this, is, this was the first surgery outside uh, India using the same Sushrut methodology, same, same thing which was carried by these Indian porters. And from there we started this uh, modern, uh, and he has written, uh, so actual operation was done on 23rd of October 1814, and he has written this uh, book, an account of two successful operations. After this successful operation, several patients came and uh, he has written a count of two, first two surgeries. So this book is also, it can be obtained, an account of two successful operations for restoring a lost nose from J.C. Carr, the classic of medical library. But it is uh, is is not so simple to find also. So I When I could find one from internet, I ordered it. And the book costed some $25 or so. But then the postage charge was uh, $100, uh, I don't know why. But I paid that and got that book. Uh, excellent, excellent. He has written in every detail. Every detail he has written the description of those two operations. And from there starts this uh, modern surgery. All right. So, okay. So this, this, this sentence he, he, he says, uh, uh, he, he writes very nicely that when the dressing was removed on third day, the patient exclaimed, Oh my God, there's a nose. Okay. So from here it starts uh, this uh, whole thing and of course in Italy there was something again. In Italy there was some rhinoplasty before this car, before this particular event that I am describing, two year, 200 years ago. But uh, their method was also the same as described by Shushruta. Only difference is Shushruta says in that Shushruta text it is take the skin from this cheek. And what Potters did, they took skin from the forehead and what the Italian doctor did, he took the skin from this uh, uh, arm. So the patient was made to remain in this position for quite long time and then the same thing, the skin was cut flat, some part was left here and then it was adjusted here, the same, absolutely same. The only difference is from where you are taking. But then this Italian thing could not uh, lead to modern plastic surgery because uh, the church did not approve it. And uh, not only they excommunicated this doctor, even after his death, 
his uh, body was uh, taken out and it was put in some unsacred place and so on. The heavy punishment, heavy punishment. So that chapter just closed there. So that should be mentioned also. Okay, so leave all these things now. Okay, this is uh, in uh, Himachal Pradesh, there is some person called Tribhuvan Das Moti Chand Shah who did this kind of surgery and he writes his own book describing all those things and he was so famous and Kalu was a, a dacaic in the area who used to cut the noses of his victims. He was very popular to cut noses. So the saying was, Kalu will cut the nose and Tribhuvan will rest restore it. So that's the kind of thing. So this, uh, so see, he has described over 100 cases treated by him in four years. Now this Kandira, Himachal Pradesh, was a center for uh, plastic surgery. And uh, what the people say that, this ear surgery was also very popularly done in Kangra. And they said the word Kangra of the place comes from Kan Garha. Right? So to make that uh, ear Kan Garha. So that is Kan Kangra, finally. So it is there. And I had seen it uh, okay, in this book. This is general knowledge book, bright publications. And which is uh, nowadays for all kinds of uh, preparation of examinations where GK is one of the subjects people study these kind of books. So this mentions about this uh, ear surgery uh, in, in Kagra. So the, so the tradition is going on for some quite some time and we should be proud that the modern surgery in uh, which is now so much advanced uh, it has its roots in, in Sushrota. And not that uh, it was there and then it was all done. Like our archaeology or town planning or, or many other things, which were in very advanced stage, but then it was all over and the world had to start afresh. It's not that. It's the same chain which is going. And then uh, finally it develops into that. So we should be proud of that. Okay, so not going into more details. We have been the leaders in the surgery. And let the tradition go on. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your words of enlightenment. Uh, I would now uh, request the audience to ask questions if they have any. They know that I am not a medical expert. <laughs> <laughs> so no point asking questions. Good evening, sir. Back on, back on those days, there were no anesthetics or tranquilizers. So how did he perform such uh, surgeries? Yeah, so there are, there are uh, informations about that. And when the first uh, anesthesia was used, that was also during this uh, period itself. But Shushru time it was not there suddenly. And what this uh, uh, describes is, give, uh, they used to give some kind of strong wine before the surgery. Uh, of course, uh, many people would have to hold the patient perhaps, but uh, that wine was used as uh, the, uh, some kind of anesthetic effects, so that the patient can bear that pain. But then at a later stage, at what stage, Gradually, some anesthesia things were developed from herbs and all those things. That is also described in later texts. It is there. Hello, sir. Uh, it's a common perception among the generation of us that there is no point studying all these facts and history and so because it is of no relevance today and we should be forward looking and so on and so forth. So, what according to you is the compulsion or the need in today's day to have such kind of discourse in our main curriculum or uh, in public knowledge. Yes, I 100% I, I agree with you. We have to live in uh, present and we have to plan for the future. We have to prepare ourselves for the future. But uh, I started my lecture answering this question only. See, I can perform, I can learn good physics, I can learn good engineering, provided I have high spirits. 
if i have my spirits low i will not be able to perform i will not be able to learn okay so my first slide says that when i went to munger and the students asked me class 9 10th the students they ask why all these scientific discoveries are made only by english man okay in a, in a smaller place like munger every non indian non indian means non pakistani non nepali is a english man there is nothing like european and french and german and japanese for uh, those kind of uh, small places everything is english ya to indian hai ya to angrez hai so why all scientific discoveries are by made by because when they read their textbook uh, the gauss law ohm's law lorentz law newton's law hooke's law boyle's law charles law all english names no sohan mohan savita <laughs> so the spirits are getting low at the at the school age itself and these uh, students have to become scientists engineer technologists and do well so as i said in your cricket match so both the teams are good in india pakistan both the teams are good but when it is a real tense moment it all depends on the psychological framework of the captain and the players which uh, decides the match so this is important to instill that confidence that yes we have done it and this particular talk that i have chosen uh, as i said uh, near the end that there is a continuity from sushru to modern plastic surgery so in fact we should be proud that yes it's only because of this that the modern plastic surgery is here in place so that confidence building that uh, uh, our spirit should be high so these things are important and therefore we have to learn all these things good evening sir good evening uh, thank you for such an uh, enlightening talk sir i wanted to ask sir that uh, was the practice of medicine i mean in the ancient times in india was i mean holistic or a very specialized kind of medicine was there i mean uh, now we believe that the ayurveda and all these uh, systems of medicine are very holistic medicines but you have been talking about i mean it's very specialized and like specific to nose and specific to ears and and etc and the second part of the question is that i mean what are your comments on like science has also become a very I mean, specialized kind of science I mean, it is a era of specialization and super specialization etc so i mean do you, uh, I mean, what do you comment on this trend and okay so first part you have already answered it i need not answer the perception is something and the hard facts are something what we can do we can bring out those hard facts which are there but not popularly known not popularly uh, said so these are all the, these are all texts available i have only read them and from there only i am talking these things but then there should be someone there should be some mechanism which can bring all those things from those books and those books are not very popular like concepts of physics so there should be someone who can take those facts from the those books which are uh, just a few in numbers kept in some research libraries and uh, tell the people tell the uh, masses that this was the thing right so this uh, surgery which was declined after this uh, manusmriti and buddha period and all those things so it has been it has gone out of our memory also right uh, thanks to those kumhars who have at least preserved one one part of it so it is like that now for the second question yes the science has become specialized but uh, there are efforts you know this uh, chandra shekhar venkat raman remember right he was a student in uh, gujarat baroda he did his uh, msc bsc msc from there with physics does a phd in physics okay and then uh, he does uh, a pure bsc does a pure biology research all these ribosomes and all those things 
they decipher the structures of ribosomes. So a physics PhD does a pure biology research and gets Nobel Prize in chemistry. <laughs> so all this division, all this specialization and all those things are artificial. When he came to Mohali, I said Mohali, I met uh, Dr. Venkat Raman and I asked him, you have studied in India up to MSc. Tell me what is uh, the uh, most important shortcoming or problem of science education in India. And the one thing is that, is that two things. One was, we divide science in physics, chemistry and biology. This should not be done. Okay, so that was the first uh, first shortcoming in his mind. So all these are in the name of uh, specialization. If we make these compartments, right, mutually exclusive sets, uh, a biology person does not know physics or mathematics, a mathematics person does not know chemistry and all that. Nature is not like that. Nature has not made that bifurcation. Nature runs with all the principles of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, everything. So if you want to work with nature, if you want to do something in this world, some, something new in this world, if you want to improve the conditions of this planet, you really cannot divide things in physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and uh, archaeology, and this logic, and that logic. It has to be taken as a as one part. So that is, that is very much there. And uh, the, how to do that? Perhaps one person cannot learn so many things. So let people do specializations, then make groups. <coughs> that could be one solution. Make group, let groups work. And in the group as a whole, you have biology, you have mathematics, you have physics, you have chemistry. So that kind of coming together, making teams, and then working could be one solution. Very good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, there are thousands of Indians uh, who have uh, the dream to enter into IIT, but uh, even uh, they all possess the potential, but sometimes due to the mishap on the decision day of J advance, they aren't able to perform as per their potential and they aren't able to crack the J. So do you really feel the system of uh, getting into IIT is apt for all the students of India? Why, why do you think it is important to get into IITs? <laughs> why so great about it? <laughs> so not only, not only something happens on the day of that JE advance, let me go one step ahead. IIT professors cannot design or you should not expect them to design a question paper which honestly can grade the students. You should not expect. The IIT professor, think of a professor who had done his or her plus two 20 years ago. After that, he went into some specialization and he says, does some MSc, PhD, postdoctoral research, guides research and all those things. And one fine morning, he gets uh, a call from JEE chairman. Sir, we want you to be in the question setters team. And all people like that, mostly IIT professors, when they join IIT as faculty, so many faculty members are here, already there is a gap of at least 10 years between their plus two and, uh, and this position. Unless their own son or daughters are in plus two, they have no connection with plus two. And they are asked to evaluate these plus two students. So our examination will not, does not honestly grade the students according to the merits. AIR, how people call it IIT Kanpur, air, AIR is air. So they call it Hava. So that Hava 1, 2, 3, 4, 500, 5000 is not, is not the real grading of the students. 
and of course that factor is also there. On the day of examination, your stomach may be upset, so something may happen there. No, before examination, generally something happens in the stomach. <laughs> so all those things are there. So that uh, absolutely does not mean that people who have not gotten into IITs are useless. And also, with due apology to all IITians sitting here, if you have gotten into IIT, you are a gem. That is also not true. But you can shape yourself. Even if you are not gem and you have come to IIT, you can become a gem. You can shape yourself. Even someone is not has not is not been able to come to IIT. Not that uh, he or she is a duffer. Can shape. You can shape yourself in IIT or outside, it doesn't matter. Does not matter if your spirits are high, if you have confidence in yourself, you are ready to sweat, if you are ready to do hard work, you, if you are honest. IIT or no IIT, no one will stop you, you will do something wondrous. Okay? Yes, sir. Sir, my question is this, uh, with this talk and various other uh, talks uh, related to this, we get motivated. Many of the physics students still I think that uh, we can do something in physics. But uh, if we uh, talk about uh, the related topic, uh, persons who are uh, in these subjects, like they are pursuing the course uh, BAMS or something, so, uh, I would like to tell about my two friends. One of them, uh, one of uh, them is doing MBBS and another one is doing BAMS. The MBBS student starts getting cadaver in the first year itself, but the BMS starts getting cadaver or uh, in third or second second year. So they start doing this surgery works in the first year, but this BMS starts doing uh, second or third year. So if they don't have confidence in themselves, and even after completing their course, they have to do a one year course in uh, this uh, like uh, BM and uh, MBBS course. Then only they can practice. So even we have this very uh, high heritage of surgery and this all things, why these things are not there in present? Because uh, even if you look on the economical these things, if these things will come in our uh, country like from uh, this Ayurveda, most of the people from all around the world will visit and uh, this will help us. So how, how it will be, why these things are not there present, sir, in Ayurveda? Oh, I got lost into such a long description of the, uh, of the question. So if I gather, uh, you said something, some start in first year, something. Perhaps you are saying that uh, for quite long period, they are exposed to these practices. And even after that, they are not able to do good surgery. Is it that you are saying? So my question is this. Sir, two students are there. One of them is pursuing MBBS. He starts cadaver in the first year itself. Okay. But the uh, further students who is doing BMS, which is related to Ayurveda, he gets the cadaver in third or second year. And not fully that uh, he can uh, miss okay. access to, to that cadaver. Okay. So, how do we learn this surgery? And okay, this okay. okay. So I am not interested in that. I am not interested in that. I don't want to compare Ayurveda and the modern medicine, allopathic medicine. I am not for that. In general, in general, our Indian science students are demotivated. That's the problem. I am hitting on that. I am not going to compare. I'm not an expert on that. I cannot compare the Ayurvedas, uh, whether they are better or whether these people are better, who can do good, who can do this. So this is outside my era. Uh, sorry, I won't comment on that. I would now like to request our uh, esteemed speaker, Dr. Elsie to kindly felicitate the winner of the logo making competition, Sai Vivek Kali Bimula. Sai Vivek, kindly come up on the stage. I would now like to call upon our uh, Dean SRIC, Professor Parita to present a memento to our respected speaker, Dr. N. Sivanga, as a token of gratitude and appreciation. I would request 
all of you to kindly fill and deposit the response forms inside the boxes allotted for the purpose. I now call upon Rishabh to conclude. Thank you. Uh, people who are leaving, if you stay back for two more minutes, you get a surprise. So please stay back for two more minutes and let me deliver the vote of thanks. First of all, I would like to thank Professor S.C. Verma for making time out of his busy schedule to come up and speak to us today. Uh, I also thank Professor uh, Parida and Professor, uh, Professor Verma for uh, being here and, and witnessing his speech today. Uh, I would also like to thank Professor Anil Kumar Gorishakti for his relentless work in promoting the cause of Sanskrit uh, in the campus. And of course, I would like to thank all the volunteers of Sanskrit Club for making this event a success. And lastly, I would like to thank the great audience that we have had here today. And coming to the point, the surprise that is there is, uh, Varmasar has kindly consented that he will be personally interacting with all the first year rights tonight at Rajendra Bhavan's TV room at 9.15. So you can talk to him personally, please be there. Thank you.